one of the things that's really important for um, people to understand, and certainly the way that Adam Anton views this, is um, climate solutions investing. You can think about it in a lot of different ways. So it doesn't necessarily have to be investing directly in the climate solution. In all the investments we make, we can be thinking about as how do we invest in the decarbonisation of that business? How are we thinking about climate and resilience and adaptation across all parts of the economy, all industries, all sectors that we invest in, not just the things that people call climate solutions investments. I think that's really important. I think the other thing that's really important, and I've been a really strong believer in this, and it's certainly an adamantum philosophy, is that for a long time, generating financial returns have been seen as quite separate to generating positive social or environmental outcomes. You're really seeing those two things come together and the people at least acknowledging that you can produce those two things alongside each other, but actually going one step further and we're going to come to a point where you're not going to be able to produce the strong investment outcomes if you're not looking to produce the strong environmental and social outcomes as part of your investment thesis. I think the one thing that we all need to do is collaborate. Um, I think this concept of collaboration is really important for us to achieve our overall climate and nature goals. Um, and I think that collaboration cuts in a number of different ways. I think we need collaboration between the government and regulators and the private sector, particularly the investment sector, um, so that we get the policy settings right to de-risk and encourage private capital um, and other capital allocation into climate solutions and decarbonisation in particular. And I think the other area we need a lot more collaboration is across all the different investor asset classes. So um, there are some real continuum of investment concepts here, starting with things that require some government funding to get off the ground and be de-risked to move through the VC stage, the private equity stage, the infrastructure stage. And I think having those conversations amongst all those different investors as to what that ecosystem looks like would be a very powerful way to unlock decarbonisation funding and outcomes across Australia. And I think we have a bit of a unique ecosystem in that respect with some of these large asset owners like superannuation funds um, and I think understanding the different roles all those different investors can play and engaging and collaborating on that will drive effective outcomes. The other trend which um, I'm sure is a common answer to this question is the rise in nature of the climate agenda um, and the intertwined nature between those two thematics and how we really can't think about climate without nature anymore, we can't think about nature without climate and so it's always really exciting to see the new investable companies and the new things that are coming out that we can look at but it is such a great opportunity for us to be able to talk to our peers in other parts of the investment markets, see what they're seeing, hear what they're thinking about and work with them in ways that we can work together to structure investment solutions. Is, it, is the ability of this space and generating those positive climate and environmental outcomes to attract really high quality talent to um, investment businesses? This attraction of top quality into the investment sector where it is allocating capital to climate solutions is really exciting moving forward because you're going to have some of the best minds from an investment perspective working on climate solutions.